Hey, happy Monday. Welcome to Upper Michigan Today featuring Andrew Lacombe as my co-host. Thanks for joining me today. Tia, thanks for having me. Hey, anytime. You're the boss. Or you just say <laughs> when. But we know Elizabeth, she's out this morning and tomorrow. She's covering a pretty major assignment downstate. Absolutely. We know she's been following the, the Jordan DeMay um, tragedy um, since that unfolded, you know, about a year and a half ago. And we found out over the weekend that two of the suspects tied to that sextortion case were being extradited to the U.S. from Nigeria. So Elizabeth went to Grand Rapids uh, yesterday and she's there again today to be in the courtroom uh, for their first court appearance. So she'll be back with us on Wednesday. But of course, uh, you can keep up to date with that entire story uh, this evening on all of our newscasts and of course on UpperMichiganSource.com. Yeah, very uh, major case to follow along. Yes, absolutely. All right, now switching over to the weather. It's a little bit chilly this morning for mid-August. Yeah, it really doesn't feel like this time of year. It really doesn't. It's refreshing, but that's kind of how the whole weekend was, yeah. right? You know, it didn't have that uh, summer heat. Jennifer says it'll be back this coming weekend, though. But today, maybe some rain showers are possible, just some light showers, nothing like Friday. I know that right. kind of bummed people out. Yeah, that had a lot of cancellations for the various county fairs that were going on through town. Um, but it seemed like they rallied. You know, we'll yeah. talk about some of those weekend events uh, yeah. up here. Beautiful in Houghton as well this morning. A nice, nice crisp start to the week. Yeah, it's definitely crisp. It, f it feels like fall. It doesn't feel like it's state fair week. No, but, it man, doesn't. That's just how this whole summer seems yeah. to have been. Yeah, and the weather, you know, we were both out at uh, Order Shore mm. events, not biking, but uh, no. kind of helping out working. And uh, Saturday morning in Nagani, it was uh, crisp uh, and a little drizzly as well. Yeah, it was very, very windy for the start of the Ordishwar, um mountain bike. So six total races went off on Saturday morning with the 28 mile soft rock and the 48 mile hard rock um, seen here taking off. Oh, no, this is going to the finish line um, in Marquette, but it started in Nagani, went to Marquette. And then in the soft rock race, the top eight racers crossed within four seconds of each other. And only one of them was in in an over 20 age group. I was actually there at the finish line from about 11.30 to 2. I was announcing those announcers. And when it came in for the um, hard rock race, the top four finishers, they came in. It was a photo finish. I wouldn't have been able to call it. They came <laughs> in just within seconds of each other. It was really exciting. I've never done anything like that. I've never actually even seen the Ordishore race before. It was really exciting just seeing those bikers continuously come in. I thought to myself, how many people are participating in this event? Well, it was a record year. Quickly though, um, Marquette's Corbin Grimm, number one in the soft rock, uh, and then his MSHS classmate Ian Kangas, number two, seven tenths of a second behind him. I know our sports director Kevin McNulty talked to both of them a couple weeks ago for a story, and they said that was their goal, to uh, have a one-two finish in the soft rock, and they did it, which is, which is pretty cool. Well, congrats um, to those guys. Yeah, but like we said, it was a record uh, number of participants in the Orta Shore over the weekend in, in the 48-mile hard rock. We saw the start of that moments ago, but Jordan Wakeley of Grayling took first place, finishing four tenths of a second before the next racer, both averaging 19.2 miles per hour. Incredible. I got this video in Forestville uh, of racers coming through. This is uh, getting closer to the finish, um, but nearly 3,000 total racers were signed up to participate in order short events over the weekend. Uh, 24th year, a record year, and big number 25 coming up next year. Wow, have you ever um, biked in the Order Shore? Never have. Never have? Would I, you consider it? I'd have to uh, do a lot of training. I road bike, I'm more of a runner, mm -hmm. uh, like more openness, I, and I blame it on my height. I feel like I'm like gonna... Well, you have the advantage hit. for running. Yeah, so. and yeah. So give a lot of credit to these people, uh, braving, uh, braving those trails, and I think they'll take a cooler day like that over a hot day, as we've I, had some years. I mean, I think it was probably a perfect day yeah. for those bikers yeah. with the wind. It was great. Yes, absolutely. Well, a lot of people were out at some county fairs this weekend, Marquette County, Iron County, and Gogibbet County, among those uh, having their events over the past weekend. Yeah, and the Gogibbet County Fair actually celebrated a record number of participants over the weekend. So the county fair went from Thursday to Sunday with activities like you would expect the rodeo, the carnival, 
Um, and a, a fair board member says this county fair has been going on for more than 100 years, but this one has been the biggest ever. Yeah, lots of tradition with these events and uh, no place knows that more than the UP State Fair, of mm -hmm. course, all the agriculture events and all the entertainment that uh, is starting this evening. Yeah, it's a jam packed weekend at the UP State Fair, not weekend, week yeah. actually. It runs today, it goes all the way through Sunday. So so many days to go, but it won't open up until about 5 p.m. later today. Every other day this week, the uh, the buildings and exhibitions will open up at 1030, but really the Carnival Midway opens up at 11. So that's when the fun will really get started. But if you're an exhibitor, someone working with the animals, you'll be up and about at, with the sunrise. Um, but uh, if you take a look at your screen, you can see the price for admission. So if you're planning on attending the UP State Fair, uh, plan accordingly, bring the right amount of cash. I will actually be going live at the UP State Fair tomorrow morning on the morning news. And um, Upper Michigan today, we'll be checking out everything that the fair has to offer. We'll be riding some rides, making some food, uh, taking some behind the scenes looks. So it's gonna be a really exciting they have the fair tomorrow for us. Yes, that'll be a fun show to watch. Always fun to be there um, before sunrise. And there's a lot, there's actually stuff going on, you know? Right, um, I know. It's, it's, that's one of those um, few days where there's actually a lot of people up and about actually doing something for the morning news. It's really exciting seeing all those kids just taking so much pride in the work that they do and yeah. seeing how they get it done. Um, Cause it's a lot of work that week. Yeah, at some extreme hours too. All right, well, uh, sh kind of shifting focus from the fair to today's topic, we have um, a family joining us in the studio about one year after Cal, the father, the husband, his diagnosis of ALS. They're joining us in the studio to talk about that journey and how you can support the family during this time with a run and walk happening later this weekend. We'll be right back.